Hi, my name is Tracy Jones, and my presentation is on action versus greater potential. First, I'll attempt to um, define what action potential is, the four phases of action potential and how they work, and then I'll touch on greater potential and the three phases of greater potential and how um, they work. And then I'll conclude with the differences between the two. So I'll start with action and potential. So, um, action potential occurs when a neuron sends information from the cell body. The action potential is an explosion of electrical activity that is created by a depolarizing current. During the action potential, Part of the uh, neural membrane opens to allow positive charged ions inside the cell and negatively charged ions out. This process causes a uh, rapid increase in the positive charge of the nerve fibers. From an electrical aspect, it is caused by a stimulus with a certain value expressed in millivolts. Adequate stimulus must have a significant electrical um, value in which, in which will reduce the negativity of the nerve cell to the threshold of the action potential. There are four phases of action potential. The first one is resting phase, where, where the stimulus occurs. Once that happens, the current um, passes the threshold of excitation, and this is what scientists um, like to call all or nothing. Next is the depolarization, uh, depolarization phase, where the sodium channels open and sodium enters the cell. After the time, um, after this time, potassium channels open and begin to leave the cell. The cell becomes less negative. Once the cell reaches um, its action potential, sodium channels become refractory. The sodium channels close and no more sodium is able to enter the cell. The next phase is the repolarization phase. Repolarization phase. This is where the potassium continues to leave the cell and causes the membrane potential to return to the resting potential. Here is where the hypopolarization hypo, hypo begins when the extra potassium outside the cell diffuses away. This is a state in which the membrane potential is more negative than the default membrane potential. All of this originates in the um, axon hillock. Now I'll touch on greater potential. Greater potential is when depolarization does not even reach the threshold. There is just an incoming of short signals to the dendrites and the soma, which is the cell body. There are three primary forms of greater potential. There is the receptor potential. This is um, a greater response to the stimulus that may be depolarizing or hyper hypo hyperpolarizing. The neuron is delivering the message across the synapse to the postsynaptic neuron. Then there's the postsynaptic potential, which is the electric potential at, a, um, at the dendrite or the, or the surface of the neuron after an impulse have been reached across the synapse. It is the receiver of the neurotransmitted message. Then we have the end plate potential. And these are the voltages uh, which causes depolarization of skeletal muscle fibers caused by neurotransmitters um, binding to postsynaptic membranes in the neuromuscular uh, junction. They are called end plates because postsynaptic terminals of muscle fibers have a large saucer-like appearance. So that just about sums up what action and greater potential is. 
So um, in conclusion, I'll compare the differences or talk about some of the differences um, between graded and action potential. So in graded potential, um, depending on stimulus, graded potential can be depolarizing or hyperpolarizing. Um, but an action potential um, is always leads to depolarization of membrane potential. And greater potential, the ions involved are usually potassium, calcium, and um, sodium. Whereas in action potential, the ions involved are sodium and potassium. Graded um, potential, no refractory period is associated uh, with graded potentials. But in action potential, <clears throat> absolute and relative refractory periods are important aspects of uh, action potential. And lastly, graded potential um, amplitude is generally small, a few millivolts to tens of millivolts, whereas in action potential, um, there's large amplitudes of hundreds of millivolts. So that concludes my presentation for action versus graded potential. Thank you.